In this video, I'm going to go through an example of an application of a delta function forcing in a second order <clears throat> linear differential equation with constant coefficients. So uh, the beginning of this problem is fairly familiar from earlier in this uh, in the course. So um, it should be pretty straightforward to see that we should end up with y double prime multiplied by a mass of one kilogram plus a gamma, the drag coefficient of two kilograms per second multiplying y prime, and then the spring constant 10 times y equal, and now the big question is how do we model this hammer striking? So um, there's a few options, so I'll just throw some of them down and let you think about them. So um, the, the momentum imparted is two, so there should be a two involved here somehow. So we could put in a heavy side function at, uh, let's say, at five as our inhomogene inhomogeneous term. Uh, we could also put in, let's say, something like a delta function evaluated at t minus five. Uh, there's other things that we could dream up, but those two are seem to capture the main sort of possibilities here. So uh, how does the um, heavy side function work? Well, that would correspond to a zero force initially up until t equal five, and then all of a sudden the force would jump up and it would then be two from then on. Now that would be reasonable if there was no force acting up until time five, which is true but then the force would have to be prolonged after that. It would be continuously applied after that. So this would be five here, and this height would be two. And so this part here, unless the hammer is striking it and continues to push, doesn't seem like the right choice. So what we are more interested in here is having no force after, and so that means we should come back down to zero immediately after the hammer strike. And while the hammer is striking, it'll be for a very short interval of time with a large intensity so that the area under that curve should be I naught, which is two Newton seconds. And so the way we capture that in a model like the one we're describing here is by having this shape converge to an infinitely tall but infinitely thin spike. And that is what this delta function would accomplish. So we have y double prime plus 2y prime plus 10y equal 2 times delta of t minus 5. And now to solve this equation, we take uh, transforms, Laplace transforms of both sides. So we get s squared times y minus s times y of 0, which is 2 minus y prime of zero, which is zero, so I'll just leave that out, plus two times sy minus two times y of zero, which is two. So this is going to be minus four, because we get this two multiplying both the sy and the y naught. And then finally, we have a plus 10 times y, and that's going to be equal to two times, and now the Laplace transform of the delta function evaluated at five is e to the minus five s. <clears throat> okay, so um, now we just solve this for y. So there's a y here, a y there, and a y there. So we get y of s is equal to two e to the minus five s. And then we bring these terms here over to the other side. And that gives us a plus 2s plus 4. And then divided by everything that came from the uh, left-hand side, which will be an s squared from the y double prime term here, a 2s here, and a 10 here. And now we're left with the job of inverting this transform y of s which is the transform of our solution so um, the first thing to do is to break this up into pieces so we get 
2e to the minus 5s divided by s squared plus 2s plus 10 plus 2 times uh, oh I see so look at that so we have I can factor out a 2 here and then I'm left with an s plus 2 and um, that gets divided by s squared plus 2s plus 10 and so this is almost the transform of a cosine you'll notice that the denominator if you calculate the discriminant you'll see that it does not factor over the reals which means we have complex uh, roots and so we need to complete the square down there on both of these and so when we complete the square we take the quadratic or the linear term in that quadratic and divide its coefficient by two and square it so that gives us one uh, one so we have s squared plus 2s plus 1 and then we subtract off the one that we just added so that we don't change the term at all and on this one we'll have the exact same thing s and now you can see that this is going to factor into s plus 1 all squared and I'll be left with plus 9 and so I can erase this term here and replace it by exactly the same thing All right, so now you'll notice that um, you'll notice that this shift here is s plus one, but this one here is s plus two. So we can break those up into two, and there's not going to be a complicated cooking job to do here. Um, but there is going to be a slight one on this term here. So you'll notice I can factor out the 2e to the minus 5s, and that's going to be 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. And this is almost the <clears throat> inverse, or this is almost the transform of sine of 3t. To make it correct, I need a 3 in the numerator. So I'm just going to multiply the numerator by 3, but then divide the coefficient out front by 3 so as not to change it overall. And then on this side, we have a s plus 2 that we'd like to split up into an s plus 1. And so that's going to be 2 times s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 9. Well, let's say call that 3 squared, just as a reminder of where it's going. And um, now there's something that we did not include here, and that is we had an s plus 1, s plus 2 times 2, and now we have an s plus 1 times 2. We're missing a 1 in the brackets, which means we have to add back a 2 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. And now this is exactly 2 times a cosine with an exponential transformed. So we can take the inverse transform of these pretty readily now. Uh, let me just clean up that numerator. So this is just going to be a 3 here. And this one is all ready, and this one just needs a little bit of work. In particular, we have a 3 here as the omega, which means we need a 3 instead of a 2 up there. So I am going to multiply this by 3 and divide by 3. And so when I do that, I'm going to get 2 over 3e to the minus 5s. 3 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 times s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared plus, and now I'm going to keep this 3 here in the numerator and move this 2 over to that one, 1 over 3. So I have a 2 over 3 out in front now, multiplying 3 over s plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. And now I can invert each of these fairly simply. So y of t is equal to 2 over 3 times u5 of t, coming from this exponential times shifted thing. 
and then multiply that by e to the minus 5. Whoops, no, e to the minus, and then in brackets, t minus 5. e to the minus t minus, one. oh no, shifted, I see, yeah. e to the minus 1t, but then I shift it by t to the minus 5 because of the exponential term. And then what's multiplying it is a sine 3t. And then for the next term, this one here, I just get cosine is plus 2 times cosine 3t. And finally, this last one is 2 thirds, oh, whoops, I forgot an exponential in there. So there's going to be an e to the minus t uh, cosine 3t and plus 2 thirds e to the minus t sine of 3t. And that is the solution to this equation. You'll notice this part here is a solution to the homogeneous equation. So you can tell that the eigenvalues or the the uh, characteristic the roots of the characteristic equation would have been um, minus one plus or minus three i, and then this term over here is a solution to the inhomogeneous part, which is that delta function term. Okay, that is the solution to this problem.